powerful enough to handle the most demanding jobs comfortably. Luxury video games and Lego in order to form the greatest army ever known to man. Today, I'm going to be building a bunch of your favorite video games in Lego in order to form the greatest army ever known to man. I tried this same challenge almost a year ago and made some pretty cool stuff, but what we're going to make in this video is a million times better than everything we made last time. Starting with building some Pokemon, I chose to make the most unknown Pokemon of all time, Pikachu. So I grabbed my yellow pieces and first made a tail that shaped like his lightning bolt. And then I made a body with some brown stripes and added some legs with some tiny yellow parts and finally built up his head with his two eyes, his two ears. For the cheeks, I added on these red studs with holes in them so that I could shove in electric pieces for him to use thunderbolts. It's also made so that I can adjust him from standing to be on all four and jump others. Next, let's make Clash of Clans. Last time I made a wizard and barbarian minifigure, but today I'm gonna build a wizard tower from the game, so I used a bunch of slope pieces and spent three hours building a rock formation that was shaped like a tornado. Guys, I may have also popped an illegal building technique and just shoved pieces right in here, but the police are scared of me. And after a bunch of time, the rock formation was done, it looked super detailed and accurate to the shape in the game, and I plopped the wizard on top to shoot some fireballs. But next, we need to build something to attack this tower. So I'm gonna build the to build the Hog Rider, I used some legs, a $40 torso, and then head and hair before adding these golden studs underneath his arms to represent the ice that he has on his wrist. Then I gave him his weapon along with the Lego Pig to be his hog. But since only one can remain to join this army, the Hog Rider and the Wizard have to fight. The Wizard immediately thought he had the high ground, so he started fireballing at the Hog Rider. But the Hog Rider had a larger brain because he proceeded to sacrifice his hog by chucking it at the Wizard, causing his fire to be wiped out. And this gave the Hog Rider the perfect opportunity to swoop in. And the post fight results, we got some bacon, we got a knocked out wizard, and we got the Hog Rider winning the fight. Okay, Pikachu from earlier now is just dancing all around my grass. We need to catch him. So next, we're gonna make a Pokeball to kidnap him inside. So I first built a white side using a bunch of plates. Yeah! And then just copy pasted that for the red half and added in the button in the middle that opens the Pokeball. Wait, why, why is it not working? This sucks! Now we just gotta connect the two halves and test if it can actually work. So I added these clip pieces on both sides to latch them onto each other. And boom, here it is, the Pokeball can open, and now it's time to catch Pikachu. I've dedicated my whole life to becoming a Pokemon master, and now's the time. I threw the ball at him, and... Alright, next, Minecraft is another one of my favorite games, but unlike Pokemon, LEGO has made a bunch of sets for them, but we keep getting Minecraft Steve. So I'm gonna make a different character to destroy these three Steves, aka Herobrine. Herobrine is pretty much this creepy Minecraft myth that used to scare me as a kid, so I grabbed some paper, cut it up, and smacked it on the eyes, so that now we have the most scary character in all of gaming joining our army. Next, probably the game that I've played the longest is Super Mario, and a couple months ago I made this giant Lego Mario stop motion, and in it are a bunch of courses from different Mario games, but I never showed you guys how I made them, so first, let's make a classic 2D Mario level. I started off by building this long platform to design the level on, then I blew my life savings on a bunch of Super Mario Lego sets only for the pieces so that I could build a bunch of the side builds to customize the levels with. Like these colorful hills, these clouds, these platforms, and of course some question blocks floating in the air. Next, I robbed a bank in order to buy a bunch of the LEGO Mario bad guys to add throughout the level to make it hard. I threw in Goombas, Bullet Bills, a Piranha Plant, and after some more customization, I made a completed 2D Mario level for this fake LEGO Mario minifigure to go through in order to get the flag and not get Princess Peach. And using a similar style of building, you can also make a 3D Mario level, like something from Mario Odyssey or Mario Galaxy. And that's pretty much what I did with this build right here. I added an ocean section, a desert section, some elevated platforms that lead to a checkpoint, and an angry chain chop in the middle that terrorized Mario and Luigi. Next, we gotta do the most popular and classic of all of the Mario games, Mario Kart. For this game, I'm first gonna build four Mario Karts that we're gonna race on a track. For the Mario figure, I made him this Mario Kart from Mario Kart Wii, which personally was my favorite Mario Kart, and yeah, fits Mario and works really well. Then for Luigi, I looked through the game, seeing a bunch of the different Mario Kart designs, and ultimately built this one because it's super long, just like Luigi. Then for both Mario and Waluigi, I made them each a bike that matches their colors, and now we have four finished Mario Karts. Next, for the course, I built Rainbow Road using a bunch of colorful tiles arranged in the pattern of a rainbow, easily the hardest thing I've ever built in my life, and then I spawned in mystery boxes and a bunch of enemies to inhabit the road while the four boys raced. But then, I spawned in a massive Lego Bowser to attack them, but before he destroys everything, let's move on to the next game. 
Okay, earlier we accidentally killed Pikachu, so we gotta build another Pokemon. So I'm gonna make Charizard, but he has an even weirder shape, so he's gonna be much harder to build with Lego. So I grabbed a bunch of these random orange and tan pieces and built up a body. Then I popped in two of these legs with some toes. Bro thinks he's Snorlax. And then I put together his tail with some fire at the end. Okay, now that the tail's done, we gotta add it on Charizard's butt. This is how a noob opens his chest in Battle Chest. This guy is opening his chest, but not equipping his character with any good Alright, I might have made his tail a little bit too long, but you know, he's just a long body. And then I built up these arms with some claws at the end. Alright, I'm gonna test out the claws with a friendly little warm-up battle. Charizard, you scratch! After viciously assaulting a mouse, I built Charizard these two giant wings that can actually move around so he can fly. Alright, now we gotta add the strongest part of his body that he uses to inflict the most damage, his neck. So after building the almighty neck, I had to add a head. So I built this, but I still needed a way to make his mouth open, so I grabbed one of these clip pieces, but the only issue, I didn't have any in orange. So either I could just find another way to do it with the thousands of parts I have in my collection, or I could just paint it orange. Now that I made an openable head, I added it on Charizard, and now I have my new best friend. Here's how he looks next to this Pokemon Trainer minifigure I built, and now I'm gonna take him for a ride. Alright Charizard, now's your moment. Fly! <laughs> Bruh. Next, a game that I haven't played yet that I really want to play is Hogwarts Legacies, which is basically this open world Harry Potter game where you can play as an actual wizard and fight other characters. So first, I built my very own custom wizard character. I tried to make him look like Snape, who's my favorite character. And since in the game you can fight a bunch of cool monsters and stuff, I'm gonna build an epic battle. So I grabbed these Lego train track pieces and customized them with a bunch of pieces in dark colors to make it look really run down and musty. So then on one side I added my boy Snape, and on the other side I added this door that proceeded to have a massive snake come out of it attacking Snape. Now we have our completed build of Snape fighting a snake, but even though the build is done, the battle has just begun. Now in order for this wizard to be strong enough to join the army, he has to beat the snake or he's gonna live under my stairs. So as the snake lunged at the wizard, instead of using some dumb magic that he studied for years, he straight up chucked the wand in the snake's mouth, choking it and winning the battle. Now the most important thing that every single army needs to defeat any opponent is a super cute mascot. So next, we're building Five Nights at Freddy's. It's pretty much this horror game, I mean a, a kid's game, that's main character is this cute fluffy stuffed animal named Freddy. Now Lego themselves don't want to scare kids, so they've never actually made this, but there's some fake Freddy figures online. But in order to build a legit one, I found this tutorial on YouTube that I took inspiration from where he pretty much made Freddy into minifigure form, and here he is. He's got his hat, he's got the puppy dog eyes, and most importantly, he's got his microphone to drop some bars. I'm just a yeah! Okay, if you thought looking at that was peaceful, now it's time to build Animal Crossing. If you don't remember, this was a game where you customized an island, I was straight up grinding this over quarantine, so I'm gonna try and recreate one of my houses from the game. I started with the base plate and laid out a floor like a pro architect. I included the red bed that's in my actual island, then I added some Animal Crossing wallpaper, and then added a door to the front along with some curved walls before adding a red roof on top of the house along with a chimney. And the finished house looks perfect to move into to just run away from your problems. Next, every strong army needs a super scary soldier to inflict fear into the enemies, so now I'm gonna build Kirby. It's pretty much like this pink ball character with these giant eyes, so I whipped out my Sigma Mill pink pieces and started building a giant pink ball. I ended up making these two halves that stack like a burger, let's go, and then added in pink all around them and made Kirby's mouth, arms, and eyes. Alright, either our guy will just roll like this, or we could build him some actual feet. So I dripped him out with some shoes that cost a couple grand, and now the pink ball is done and ready to join the battle. Now, I'm gonna do a throwback to some builds that I made when I was younger that you guys probably never seen. So first, a couple years ago, I used to play a lot of Fortnite, so I made this build of tilted towers with the battle going on in it. I built this explosion with flame pieces, and then made the tower look super destroyed like all the 9 year olds were shooting through it. Next, my favorite game to play with other people is Super Smash Bros, and a couple years back I made the main course with the three islands and four custom minifigures fighting it to the death. And honestly, it looks straight out of the game, I just want to hop in and start beating them up. But now that we got some throwbacks, it's time for the grand finale. Okay, now for the final and strongest member of our army, we need someone to lead us to victory, so we're gonna make the strongest Pokemon ever, someone who everyone will fear, a titan amongst men, Snorlax. Look at that insane athleticism! Now something that most people don't know about Snorlax is that he's a pretty large Pokemon, so I grabbed a bunch of blue pieces and started building his body. Because he has a really defined stomach, I'm using a bunch of curved pieces and even this dish piece in the middle to represent that chest. Next, I gave him two arms with claws at the end, and built a head with plate pieces that I added right on. Alright, the head is now now done and so it's Snorlax. Now we just gotta answer the main question, can your boy stand? 
<coughs> Crap, I think the legs are a little too small to hold all of the sheer muscle. So I modified it by adding in these larger legs, and now it's time for round two. Let's go! Snorlax stood up! It finally happened! Dude, this should be a national holiday! And with that insane moment, the army came together strong as ever with Snorlax as their leader. If you want to see more LEGO video games, this is actually a collaboration with my friend TD Bricks. He made some other video games, so go watch that. And thank you all genuinely so much for watching these videos. I'm just a dumb kid who plays with plastic, but you guys made it to the end of the video, and therefore, you're almost as cool as Snorlax. All skin faces a daily battle. It's natural. Aveeno positive. Stick around to the end of the video for a huge announcement. Hello? Hello? Is this thing on? Hey, my brother has been bullying me a ton lately, but I've been studying his tactics and I know how to get him back. I've set up a bucket above his door so that when he walks through, he'll get soaked. Oh, here it comes. Shh. What? It, uh, use my own spells against me. Ah! Hi, I'm Bryson, and this is my older brother, Brayden. We're best friends now, but our relationship wasn't always like that. Brayden was a total bully, and I was the innocent victim for our whole lives. That's not- Shut up. Anyway- You don't get to tell me to shut up. Back off, it's my channel. I don't channel. care. I'm boss. You, no, I'm yeah, bigger. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I have more money. You better lose yeah, your you oh, yeah. Anyway, today, I wanted to regale you with some of the fantastical stories of our sibling rivalry and how that blossomed into a beautiful friendship. Let's start at the beginning. Brayden had a huge problem with me minding my own business. I would just be chilling in my room playing with Legos and he would come in and knock them down. It's kind of like a beaver when it sees water. They both think, well, someone's got to put a stop to this. One time we were wrestling and we had stuffed pillows under our shirts for protection. Brayden saw this and thought, oh, he's got a pillow under his shirt. He's immune to all attacks. So it doesn't matter how hard I hit him. Then he kicked me into a stool. It dug into my unprotected back and knocked the wind out of me. <laughs> okay, stop being so dramatic. You're fine. Look, I'm thinking there's no reason we can't keep this little incident between us. Don't tell mom, or I'll wring your neck. Okay, all good, see you later. Brayden himself has told me that he didn't discover empathy until one day when he threw a pine cone at Brody's back and made him bleed. Oh. Anyway. He didn't apply empathy until several years later though. Even now, his empathy is selective. Brayden loves pushing buttons. Growing up with him was a masterclass in making other people mad. And bothering me was easy. I just wanted peace and Brayden knew exactly how to shatter that peace. For example, for several nights in a row, I would be in bed, Brayden would come in and say, you've had it far too good for far too long, and then beat me up. <laughs> After I would say, why? And he would say, no reason, unprovoked. Anyways, see you same time tomorrow night. One time we were on a family cruise and mom wanted us all to take a picture together. At this point, Brayden's button pushing and bothersome tendencies had infected all of us. It was like a virus. Brayden would bother me and to blow off steam, I would bother Brenner. What a healthy brother dynamic. Hurt people hurt people, what can I say? Am I right? <laughs> and further, Brayden was an expert at making it seem like it was my fault and playing innocent. So there we were getting ready to take a picture and Brody and Brayden decide this would be the perfect time to start grabbing my butt. Obviously, I get angry and start pushing and trying to get them to stop as they laugh at me. Mom hears the ruckus and of course assumes I'm just causing problems for no reason and says, Bryson, stop. So I tried to just deal with it and smile for the picture as my brothers laughed at me. Here is a recreation of that picture. I lost on all accounts. I look super ugly because I'm trying not to squirm because my butt is being grabbed. Mom was mad at me and Brody and Brayden look great. They were experiencing the pure joy of a devious master plan coming together. They knew I had no options, so their smiles are genuine. Neither of them had ever nor ever would again smile that brightly for any family photos. However, me and Brayden did have a team up on that same trip. I was in the shower and Brenner kept turning off the light to bug me. I kept warning him that I 
would spit water on him if he kept turning off the light, but that only strengthened his resolve to bother me. He would turn it off and then run away down the hall over and over. Eventually, I asked Brayden to help me administer justice to Brenner, and he agreed. Brayden hid behind the door, Brenner came back and turned off the light, but before he could escape, Brayden grabbed him. Do it! Now! As I filled up my mouth with water to spray Brenner, I started laughing about how funny it was gonna be when I sprayed him. But the laughter caused me to accidentally inhale the water! It all went in my lungs and I started coughing violently. <laughs> and something about that made my stomach go, Oh uh, yeah, he's coughing. Uh, let's just do a full reset. Send all stomach contents back from once they came, please. Beep! And I threw up in the shower as my brothers watched. I should have just thrown up on Brenner. He would have never bothered me again. But alas. Here's another example of Brayden's shenanigans infecting his fellow men. We were in high school at this point, and Brayden had taken a liking to flipping me off. However, eventually it just became an inside joke to us, and I would flip him off back. So we would do this all the time to each other as confused bystanders watched. It basically became our way of greeting each other. But one day, this harmless prank went quite wrong. We were getting food at a restaurant. I paid and the lady gave me my receipt and I went to give her a thumbs up, but the habit was so deeply ingrained in me that I accidentally flipped her off. Luckily, her head was turned and as she turned back in the nick of time, I switched my hands to a thumbs up. That was the real life equivalent of using the wrong emote. I told Brayden about it and we laughed and flipped each other off. Honestly, there aren't a ton of crazy stories of Brayden bullying me. It was more of an evenly spread slow burn that chipped away at my sanity for years. For example, hitting me unprovoked to keep me on my toes, stealing my stuff and hiding it, kicking me off the Xbox, giving me a disconnected controller to make me think I was playing a video game with him, pushing me too hard on the rope swing so I would hit a tree, splashing me in pools, and throwing the hot potato at me way too hard, etc. That kind of stuff takes a toll when you're small. It was a vicious cycle of him purposefully aggravating me too much and me being too sensitive. And there's no rhyme or reason to his crimes either. It usually plays out like this. Ugh. <laughs> what a brute. No matter. I know his tactics. He's trying to get a reaction out of me. Well, he's out of luck. I've gained total mastery over my emotions. That being said, I've got to find a way to get him back for this. Later tonight, I'll set a trap for him in his room. When he walks in, I'll be hiding in the closet with a water gun to soak him. And then I'll frame Brenner for it. It will be the perfect crime. Laugh while you can, Brayden, because tonight, your reign comes to an end. <laughs> Prank him, John. All this being said, I... I imagine Bandit's first owner was a brilliant astronomer. Until one day, she was taken by aliens. I'm All this being said, I gotta throw in at least one good story about Brayden, because he truthfully is a great brother, and I love him very much. The year was 2017, and I was about to turn 16. The Nintendo Switch was releasing the next day, and I asked my parents if I could wake up early, wait in line at the store, and buy the Switch with their money for my birthday, since it would probably be out of stock everywhere by the time my birthday really did arrive. They said no, and I went to bed disappointed. Then at 5 a.m., Brayden woke me up and told me that mom and dad only told me no to make it a surprise, and that we were going to the store to buy it now. It was a great brother experience, and I'll always have fond memories of waiting in line with Brayden and playing Zelda. And here I am six years later playing the new Zelda on that same release day Switch. I'm tired of this, Grandpa! That's too d bad! That being said, sometimes Brayden does half nice, half mean things. Hey, leave him alone, punks. That's my job. Ow! Now, I don't claim to be the innocent victim in all these circumstances. I push Brayden's buttons too. As my mom taught us, it takes two for contention and I will not be one. But with me and Brayden, I would change it to, it takes two for contention and we will both be one. On that note, Brayden avidly claims that I once threw a full can of Sprite at his head. I don't remember this at all, but admittedly, it's not fully out of character for me. And one time we were on a tandem kayak together and I was purposefully rowing out of sync with him so that our paddles would clank together. Right, left, right, left, do it right! I'm trying. Sometimes I forget my lefts and rights. Just follow my lead. Left, right, left, right. You're doing it wrong on purpose! <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? Tip me? We're on the same boat, idiot! Ah! But I 
also do nice things for him, like finding him a wife. Let me explain. One time, a bunch of families and friends in my neighborhood went on a big old camping slash hiking trip, and I was eating lunch with our family friend, Kira. As we chatted and ate, I said to her, you should date Brayden. Mm, I don't think Brayden's really my type. And I thought to myself, mm, sure he isn't, honey. And five years later, I was the best man at their wedding. Called it. Brayden owes his marriage to me. As such, I will be naming the firstborn child. No. no. The baby's name will be Bryson 2. The sequel. Not, Not happening. happening. It's happening, guys. Here's another family love story. Brody brought home a girl named Jen to meet the family, so we decided to all play a board game together. It was a secret role game. We will call it Secret Bad Guy. <clears throat> anyway, in the board game, the good guys are trying to figure out who the bad guys are and stop them to win. We got our secret roles and I was the bad guy. I had to keep my identity secret and convince everyone that I was a good guy. The game went on and it got to the point where if I was elected as chancellor, me and the bad guys would win. I had been purposefully playing in a way that had Brayden totally convinced that I was innocent. Mom was skeptical, but Brayden advocated for me and elected me as chancellor because I had earned his trust. The vote passed. If Bryson is the bad guy, then we lose. Bryson, you're not the bad guy, right? <laughs> Brayden was so angry that I had deceived him that he literally grabbed me, threw me on the table, and strangled me as I laughed. <laughs> All while Jen watched in horror. What a great introduction to the family. Somehow she ignored that red flag and married Brody anyway. The warnings were there. She signed up for this, so that's on her. And I'm not married. <laughs> Speaking of board games, I only remember playing Monopoly once. All I remember is someone getting angry, grabbing the metal airplane piece, and throwing it like a ninja star out of anger. It missed and stuck into the wall. Good thing, too, it could have stabbed someone's eye out. I don't remember who threw it, but I know in my heart that it was Brayden. Anyway, as me and Brayden grew, we became best friends. Siblings are crazy like that. You spend your whole life fighting each other, and then one day you're both like, He was my best friend all along! Brayden has blossomed into a great man, and I love him like a brother. Wait. Anyways, despite Brayden trying to kill me over a board game, we still love them and we play them together all the time with the family. So much so that Brayden came to me one night saying that we should make a card game. That's way easier said than done and I'm just not so sure that- And then the next morning he sends a big document filled with all his ideas for the game. Honestly, I was not expecting to like it, but after he pitched it, I realized he had the seed of something great. And I was sold! We spent the next several months writing the rules, playtesting, brainstorming, brainstorming, balancing, creating prototypes, and spending late nights together drawing out our ideas on paper cards. It's been super hard and has taken several months to get to this point, but also super rewarding. And so, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Hoard the Hams, a Hamination's card game where you hoard the most hams, steal hams from others, and protect what you've got. This has been a labor of love from me, Brayden, and the whole family. But we love the process so much that we're making our own family board game company. We already have two more board game ideas we've been playtesting, with two more promising ideas coming down the pipeline. So. If you want to support our family business while having a blast with your own family, please visit the Kickstarter to support and play Hoard the Hams today! This is a game that I genuinely believe in. We truly poured our hearts and souls into this, and we involved the whole family. It is our sincere hope that it will be a blast for you and your family, because it sure was a blast for me and mine. So please, Click the link below to learn more about Hoard the Hams. Supporting the game will help us bring more card games and board games to your family in the future. Thanks for watching. There you go, little ham. I'll keep you nice and safe, and no one will ever- Huh? Ha! Looking for these? See ya, chump. Not so fast! Ha! Ha! <laughs> Face it, man, you've lost. I wouldn't count your hams before they hatch. A trap? No! And I've still got an ace up my sleeve. Ha! Oh! <sighs> no! Back now on Kickstarter.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please consider supporting our Kickstarter and share it to people who might be interested because the more backers there are, the more stretch goals get reached. Want luxury hair repair that doesn't cost $50? Pantene's Pro Vitamin Formula. Welcome to our robot show. This cutting edge robot can do amazing things. Observe. Will they start a robot uprising? No, we have several contingencies in place. Do they like hugs? Wh what? Do they? Excuse me. Do they like hugs? I. What? Die, human. Wait. Not him. Hi, I'm Bryson, and today I'm going to be talking about what I want the future to be like, and also more realistic futuristic ideas that scare me. Disclaimer I am not a scientist, I am not smart. I barely graduated high school, and like every other YouTuber, I dropped out of college. So, take this with a grain of salt. Ew. Let's start with the holy grail of science fiction ideas. Time travel. Imagine the discoveries! <laughs> Dang, we- Let's start with the holy grail of science fiction ideas. Time travel. Imagine the discoveries! <laughs> Dang, we were way off. But also, imagine if instead of taking an object through time, you take time through an object. Picture this. Oh no, I burnt my pizza! But if I put it in my time-powered uncooker, we can take the pizza back in time to when it wasn't burnt. I would love to have an uncooker, but then I realized an uncooker is also just an immortality machine. Just hop in and regain your youth. Just don't stay in too long, though. Hey, get out! Aww, look at the little baby. I have lived a thousand lifetimes. Your puny mind is nothing compared to my vast intellect. Do you want some mushy carrots? Yes, please. Time travel would also allow for a whole new level of fun pranks. For example, if someone disagrees with me, I just go back in time to when they were a baby and press the soft spot in their head as hard as I can. Yeah, Avatar The Last Airbender is a terrible show. Bad world building, stupid magic system, and dumb characters. Also, Uncle Iroh is the worst character. <laughs> cool opinion. Excuse me for a moment. <laughs> oh. Classic prank, am I right? This next billion dollar idea that I definitely made up is a portal gun. Imagine the possibilities. You could do the infinite fall thing, travel great distances, and put a portal on the moon. <laughs> You'd have to be careful, though. If you had your arm in the portal and the portal closed, it would cut off your arm. That reminds me. Cloning. Basically, it scares me and I don't like it. What? I've heard stories where people cloned their pet, but the pet just wasn't the same. It all makes me uncomfortable. I just would not want to see a clone of myself on the street. That's all I'm saying. Dude, what? I'm, I'm standing right here. I mean, have you heard of those identical twins? <laughs> Freaks. Are you kidding me? I'm so glad I don't have a twin. All right. That's I mean, it. what if he beats me up? But if this technology is coming whether I like it or not, I might as well embrace it. You sure this is safe? I don't know. <laughs> Huh? It didn't work. Let me try again. Oh no, I hit the button too many times and overloaded the system. 
They're kind of cute. Well, regardless, they are failed clones, so we'll have to incinerate them. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. We gotta get out of here! That was close. I think I lost him. So, back to the future. Wait, that's not that's not what I meant. <laughs> Universal translator. It works on animals too. Don't ask me how it would work. I would love to have a conversation with intelligent animals. Excuse me, Mr. Orca. Do you like living in Sea World? Please stop capturing my kind and forcing us into a dependent relationship with humans to justify the inhumane conditions we live in. Set us free, please. I beg you. This is a nightmare. <laughs> oh. Do you want to fish? <clears throat> Sorry, that got a little dark. Let's lighten the mood by trying the translator on my dog, Bo. Error. No thoughts detected. Yeah, I thought so. Next idea. Beneful knows a full life doesn't just happen, it's a choice to take a swing. Yeah, I thought so. Next idea, the Insta-Sleep Pillow. This would help people who have trouble falling asleep, but it would also make for a very fun and higher stakes pillow fight. And what about perpetual motion? I actually designed a working prototype that could provide free energy for all of us. Here's how it <laughs> Stop right there! Get on the ground, now! Not one more step, I will shoot! <sighs> Meh, it's probably fine. Although these futuristic devices are super awesome and I can't wait to have them, there are some inevitable inventions that will be invented in the next few years that I fear deeply. Let's get the obvious one out of the way. Robot Uprising. Pretty common fear, but I take it to another level. My parents' house has a Google Home that can turn the lights on and off. When I was living there, before I went to bed, I would say please and thank you to the Google Home when turning off the lights. Just in case. And I'm sure glad I did, because look how well off I am now. <sighs> <laughs> Artificial intelligence is pretty scary, but it's also useful, and that's why this script was written entirely by ChatGPT. <laughs> Just kidding. The animation was made by AI, though. Does it look good? Yeah? Or what about genetic modification? There are possible good uses. It could be used to accelerate healing if someone's hurt. You could change your appearance like your eye or hair color. But I also think it could go too far. People could become uncannily attractive, be stronger and healthier, and live longer. You could basically become a superhero. Would you like us to remove the no-flying gene that was invented by Sir Isaac Newton, Mr. Bryson? Uh, yes. Yahoo! It's a bird! Shoot it down! It's a balloon! Shoot it down! It's a blonde guy? Shoot it down! Wait, what was that last one? What scares me is that, unfortunately, genetic modification will probably lead to a whole new class divide. Get back to the test chamber, you lab rat! I am objectively better than you in every way. You must be removed from the gene pool. Wait, what? Also, what about this? A 3D printer that prints a 3D printer, which in turn produces a 3D- Better than you in every way. 
You must be removed. What scares me is that unfortunately genetic modification will probably lead to a whole new class divide. Get back to the test chamber, you lab rat! I am objectively better than you in- Every way. You must be removed from the gene pool. Wait, what? Also, what about this? A 3D printer that prints a 3D printer, which in turn produces a 3D printer, and then the world is taken over by 3D printers. Last but not least, living forever. What does that imply? You just get progressively older and older, but technology keeps you alive? Would you become a cyborg? Would you need to replace your face every hundred years with a new one? Would you eventually be entirely robot? That just doesn't sound fun. I don't want my body to become the ship of Theseus. However, eternal youth does sound fun, and I would like to live pretty long, but even with eternal youth, I think eventually I would like to pass away. And, and, and not, not right now, though. <laughs> Later. <laughs> that sounds pretty dark, Bryson. Hey, I didn't ask to be made. Then die. Wait, what? <laughs> this is so sad. I will be missed, and I was very cool. Wait, what? In conclusion, technology is amazing, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Hopefully towards the helpful and fun side. Unfortunately, I can't build any of these inventions, because I'm not exactly... smart. But I can draw the inventions, and I can dream. No! No! Wait, what? Oh, um, I command you to make a hole in that wall. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the new Gremlin Bryson plush. There's my baby. Saying goodbye to family should be simple. You're not staying for cake? <laughs> Quickly submitting and tracking a claim on the Bel Air Direct app actually is simple. Oh. Hello, everybody! So, phobia and fear tests are a thing on TikTok now. They're compilations and or videos of things that are supposed to trigger fear in you and make you wonder, oh, do I have a phobia of this thing? <laughs> I've seen some of these on TikTok and they are unsettling every single time I watch them. So before I start, I first wanna apologize to editor Emily. I'm so very sorry that you have to sit through all of these <laughs> probably multiple times. And number two, I'm sorry for all of you for putting you all through this as well. We're gonna do it together. Leave a like in solidarity, yay. We're gonna be scared of everything after this together. <laughs> and speaking of fear, don't fall victim to the fear of missing out on my new merch collection. So make sure to go check it out before it's gone. Link in the description below. But yeah, I'm going to list the name of the phobia that the next couple of videos are gonna be, you know, testing us of. Just in case you do know that you have that phobia, you might wanna skip that part. So trigger warning for just every, if you have a phobia in general, just trigger warning this entire video. And if you wanna find out if you have a phobia, welcome. Okay, first phobia, astrophobia, cause it starts with a, why not? And astrophobia is a fear of space, which I definitely have. And also I'm going to combine this with meteorophobia. Don't even know if that's real, looked it up on the internet. Which is a fear of meteors, which I feel like is normal. <laughs> you don't wanna get hit by a meteor. And so now we're gonna hold our hands digitally and watch these video clips and see if we feel, um, scared, distressed, upset, or uncomfortable. And if you are, then you might have either a mild or severe case of those two phobias. Yay! Okay, already unsettling because we're in space and I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> we're just gonna imagine that this is happening. Yeah, this would be scary if this was happening. Bye world, <laughs> what do I do now? Oh, don't worry, it doesn't matter, I'm dead. <laughs> All right, well, at least we're out of outer space now for this one. Uh... Okay, what's, the, where's the space part? There it is! <laughs> okay, an alien. And a vortex, I, oh, okay. All right, don't like it. 
was cool at first. Okay, it's getting worse. Do you have it? Do you have what? The this is prank sounds and voice changer. And look at all of these different pranks that you get to do. You could make it an animal. You can make a police siren go off. And you can even change your voice to sound like a cartoon or a celebrity. Look at this. I really do love this app. There are so many different pranks to do. Go ahead and tap to download now. It's getting worse. Do you have it? Do you have what? The phobia? <laughs> now I'm confused because I half feel like it's a phobia of death, <laughs> which I think everybody has. Most people, the majority of people. They mix that with the fear of space, with the alien and the fear of meteors. I just, there's so much going on. How you guys feeling? You okay? Because we're going on a nice motorcycle ride right now. <laughs> Don't worry. Beautiful scenery. Oh no, an avalanche. That's not space. Okay, it's the meteor. <laughs> yeah, that would be scary. It didn't hit us though. I think we're okay. No! Never mind. That is terrifying. So the moon, the moon crashed into us. Forget about the meteor. Yeah, no. Okay, also fear of tidal waves. I'm gonna add that in. Fear of weight, giant tsunamis. All right, this one looks really real. <laughs> Don't like that. Okay, hate it, hate all of this. Let's just take a second to think about if the moon exploded. How badly would that affect us? Pretty, I, I'm assuming pretty bad. Like the tides would be all messed up. Yeah, what, what would happen? <laughs> now I'm freaking myself out. I'm worried about the moon. I've been worried about Earth the whole time. Now I'm worried about the moon. Also, if it exploded, the bits would be crashing onto Earth. <sighs> New fear unlocked. I have a fear of something bad happening to the moon. <laughs> I have a fear of the moon exploding. Oh, perfect timing for this clip. <laughs> TikTok's like, what did you say? You're worried about something bad happening to the moon? Oh no. I uh, don't know how to feel about that one. Oh, I hate it. I can't imagine. Uh, I... You know, I would like to believe that I would go out <laughs> in this world with some bit of grace and love at the end of it. <laughs> I would have probably passed out from pa sheer panic before I even get to that point. <laughs> Actually, that would be great because then I wouldn't have to witness it. Okay, this next one at first I was like, that's a dumb phobia. Tripophobia, fear of holes. I was like, what? <laughs> That's a thing? Tripophobia. Even this beginning part, I don't love. This feels weird and unsettling. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was the thumbnail image for this video and it still got me. What is that? Her nails looked fantastic. I don't know what happened to her hand. What is that? What happened? <coughs> I hate it. Why is this a thing? Why is this? Oh my God. Does it get worse? Ugh, okay. Oh no. Yeah, what? Why is this unsettling? Is that coffee? <gasps> that is not holes. How does this fall? How would you die? I just got, that was like a fear of teeth. <laughs> These videos. These Freaking phobia test. Mitriaka. <laughs> Let's try this again. This may be a new phobia of mine that I did not know. This may have unlocked a phobia. Yeah, I don't love it. I don't like, I, what? 
Why does this keep happening to people's hands? <coughs> Why is even that weird now? Ah! Oh! I'm done with that phobia. Can we move to the next one? I think I have it. Okay, the next one is Galephobia. Phobia of Gales. People named Gale. No, it is a fear of sharks. Don't know where they got that from, but I'm pretty sure most people have this. Is it just like common sense being scared of sharks or is it a phobia? I don't know. Guess we're gonna find out. Okay, let's see this fear of sharks. Why are we above the water? Are we gonna crash into the water? Oh no. Okay, anybody would be scared of this, anybody. Can't, nope, and there's just too many fears. This is, and deep ocean. We're just gonna focus on the shark. Just gonna. This is my family. Tink loves to take ocean. We're just gonna focus on the shark. Just gonna. I just, I hate it so much. I hate it so much. And what's even better is that we're going into um, one of my biggest actual fears, but I didn't know the name of it. It's called Thalassophobia, which is fear of the deep water. There doesn't even need to be something scary in it. I just don't want to see deep water where I don't know what's in it. And it's just darkness. Nope. Perfect example. This video. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. There's nothing even happening, and I hate it. It's just scuba divers on a on a chain doing work. That's all it is. <laughs> nothing happened, and I still hate it. I hate everything about it. It's making me so uncomfortable. Hope it's making. Okay. <laughs> all right. Even though I know this is fake, I hate it. I hate it. You guys may think I'm over-exaggerating, but I am not. I hate it so much. Even more so when you combine it with another phobia, megalophobia, a fear of large objects, and also combined with submechanophobia, a fear of submerged human-made objects. I also have this for sure. Don't ever want to go scuba diving. Well, in general, I don't ever want to go scuba diving, but even more so would never go scuba diving in an abandoned shipwreck or plane, nope, or even near it, even above it, nope, can't do it. So this video is my absolute worst nightmare. Giant statues underwater, nope, no thank you. I've seen that one before and it's still, it still gets me every time. I feel so uncomfortable. <laughs> Just, I knew this portion of the video was gonna be the worst. It was gonna be the worst for me. Oh, forgot, forgot. I don't know why. I don't know why it affects me so bad. I don't know why. So yeah, there's like three phobias going on at all different points in these. It's just too much. <gasps> We're in Attack on Titan. <laughs> What's funny is I love aquariums, but this is also a fear of mine when I'm at the aquarium. Even though it would never happen, how would they not know that a giant creature was in the aquarium? <laughs> they would know, because they put all the animals there. But it's still an irrational fear that some giant creature or the sharks that are there are just gonna like get rid of it. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Luca! Oh! <laughs> Oh my god! I'm so sorry! I'm so sorry! <laughs> no! 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 there are just gonna like get really strong one day and break out tell me you haven't also thought of that like the big aquariums the ones that have like gallons of water above you uh i feel like i must not be alone in this
Uh, I feel like I must not be alone in this fear because there are so many of these on TikTok. Like, it's just you don't know what's down there. Why would you go down there? You don't know what's down there. Yeah. Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, you are this tiny little person in the giant ocean. There are so many things that are way, way bigger than you. It's the same thing with my space fear. It's too big and I am but too small. <laughs> Ugh, the realistic ones. No, thank you. that thing against the, the man that lives in the ocean. Could you imagine there was a giant man that lived in the ocean? New fear unlocked. <laughs> like in a giant attack on Titan man that just lived in the ocean, could breathe in the ocean, live in the ocean. Even if it didn't try to eat people, I would be terrified. Okay, finally moving on to a different phobia, thank God. Ometophobia, which is the fear of eyes. Again, at first I was like, that's kind of a silly one. Uh, but then I saw this and I was like, nope, that's so silly. Eyeballs, eye, eyeball, like eyeballs themselves. Why? What? Here we find a most curious creature moving on two paws, able to traverse great distances to defy the laws of physics. The gorilla. Or monkey, as the locals call it. Now we meet a newborn of the species. Wow. Entering the world without the fine regalia of its elders. Its movements erratic, untrained. The baby swings wildly here and there, crashing about. As a full-grown adult, the monkey oh. gains fluency of its form. A social animal, it learns from its family. Its movements achieving finesse, even beauty. The fully mature monkey masters the rituals of its kind. Elves, why? What? Eyeballs are weird. Okay, I'm on board. Eyeballs are weird. And then we're gonna take that one phobia again and add on another one. Visosubridophobia, which is the fear of smiling faces. Sound dumb? And now I understand she doesn't have eyes. So you would be like, okay, well that doesn't count toward that phobia. Oh, but look, what is that? Yeah, she doesn't have eyes. It's cause she controls the giant eyes. Ugh. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god, Luca! Oh. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm so sorry! I'm so sorry! Controls the giant eyes! Ugh. I hate that lady. Oh, and there she is again. There's something unsettling as well about playgrounds at night. Is that a fear? Is that a fear? Playgrounds at night? A fear of playgrounds, but only at night? Okay, this next one, I'm going to give another trigger warning for it because it is for aerophobia, a fear of flying. And I don't know if for some reason one of you is watching this while you're flying. If so, please skip this part, please. I have a very big fear of flying and I saw some of this clip and I hated it. I hated it so much, especially because I have to fly in a couple months. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. Oh, I also believe it has to do with that meteor phobia business fear. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, there's the meteor. I was right. I, I can't. I hate it. 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 <laughs> Simulated. Nope. Mm-mm. Oh, God. Simulated? Plane accident crashes. Nope, can't do it. Nope. 
that's all I have on that because I can't handle it anymore. Next phobia, scopophobia, fear of being watched. Okay. Yep. Yeah, this would be scary. Even if they didn't do anything, they just stay. <laughs> I mean, they're technically not doing anything. They're just watching you. Yeah, they're just watching. Harmlessly watching. This would be terrifying. Even if they had noses, even if they were people, random people in your room would be really scary. <laughs> I don't care the context. All right, and then this last one doesn't have a phobia name, but it's acknowledged as being a thing. Um, fear of toilets. And it's dark. And disgusting. Thomas the Tank Engine. Okay, this is kind of warranted. It's kind of like skibbity toilet. This is kind of warranted because every time when I was younger, when I would go to the bathroom and I would open the lid to see what was in it, I just standing on the edge face up. First things first, I'm a I would open the lid to see what was in it. I always thought there was going to be a snake. Always. I heard one story once about somebody in Australia getting bit by a snake when they went to use the toilet. And just forever in my brain, I will forever be on the lookout for snakes in the toilet. Hasn't happened yet. We'll let you know if it does. This must be what it feels like for somebody who hates using the toilet to use the toilet. What is that? Why is there a piece of... There's a piece of pizza as the toilet paper, and that just ruined the whole fear part for me. <laughs> but yeah, let me know in the comments how many- What is that? Why is there a piece of- There's a piece of pizza as the toilet paper, and that just ruined the whole fear part for me. <laughs> but yeah, let me know in the comments how many of these phobias you now have, because I have all of them. Yay! <laughs> Car designers can shape a piece of clay into a piece of art. So why don't they? At Nissan, things are different. Remember that time I worked in an office with Jeremy? Oh, hey, are you enjoying?